I think it was definitely probably a lot more explosive than the first volume. Um, I think the lasting takeaways were really, you know, the family's dynamic and relationship with the media and that sort of interconnectedness. Um, the narrative surrounding the Duchess of Sussex's victory against Associated Newspapers was really interesting, especially the comments from her lawyer, who obviously happens to be a partner at Shillings, the, fam the firm that famously represented Princess Diana. I thought that was a very interesting detail. Um, and the comments surrounding the relationship or lack thereof between Prince William and Prince Harry were especially interesting and actually quite sad um, when you think about where it's left their family. Um, I also thought that one of the standout moments was Harry's description of what's become known as the Sandringham Summit. Um, and the revelation that that statement that was put out from seemingly from both of them to say that there was no bullying was never run by Harry. Um, and that suggests a lot about the practices of the royal family and publishing statements and everything like that. But all in all, I think it was um, kind of what we were expecting. It documented that kind of second half of their journey and then coming out the other side ultimately, which was very positive. So it ended on a good note. But I think it does work in that it shows you, I think, what is striking is what a missed opportunity Meghan was for the royal family. It talks about the Commonwealth being made up of 2.5 billion people who are mostly people of colour. You know, it shows how popular Meghan was when they went to South Africa, how easily she was able to work with the women uh, who were survivors of Grenfell and how successful that project was that that uh, book and project has raised over two hundred thousand pounds and counting and was at the top of numerous bestseller lists um and i think particularly when that story was juxtaposed with the coverage of the wessexes and the cambridges trip to the caribbean which was widely negatively received in those countries and met with a lot of backlash it's no wonder that you hear Prince Harry saying that the royal family missed a great opportunity. Um, and I thought Afua Hirsch's words mm -hmm. in particular, talking about that it was the death of a dream for a lot of black and mixed people when they had to leave the royal family. Um, and it kind of shows that this institution might never change. And I think that's probably what's most damaging for the royal family, what comes out from all of this, is that Meghan and Harry are appealing and do appeal not only to a new generation of people, but to people who have never resonated with the royal family before because of their race, because of their beliefs. And I think that was a huge, huge missed opportunity. And I think that's what came across for me, just how dynamic they are as a couple, how capable of they are everything they've achieved both in the short time that Meghan was within the royal family Meghan and Harry were, were, were working royals and in the time following that Meghan has had a New York Times best-selling book even this documentary is the second most watched program globally on Netflix she's got an award-winning podcast those that's a long list of achievements in a very short space of time and it makes you think that they've been doing this all for the benefit of the royal family. I think from this documentary, what a lot of people were hoping to get were exactly down to the bone. This is what happened. This is where they lied. This is who lied. But I do think despite reports that Meghan and Harry are trying to destroy the royal family or destroy the institution, I actually think they've done a great deal of protection. Um, Tyler Perry said it in the documentary about the Oprah interview. You know, there was so much more they could have said, but they didn't. And I think that's for a number of reasons. But at the heart of it, probably the fact that Prince Harry and, by extension, Meghan do still have some loyalty to family, and they're probably people within that institution that they want to protect 
friends that maybe uh, could refute those stories that they want to protect. Um, and so I don't really think we're ever going to get to the bottom of those claims. I'm sure there are so many things that they could tell us that would probably blow up the royal family, but they've refrained from doing that. And I think that says a lot about who they are and their character.